This guy has a video game and computer museum in his house. From a collecting standpoint, if you put the two collections together, you're probably looking at over a million dollars. This lady turned her country home from drab to fab. I know this has sometimes happened if people smoke pot and come into my house, they have to leave. And a travel warning in cottage country. There be pirates here, matey. Captain Joe and my crew and I are chasing the Winona today. We're going to find the treasure. Look out, Captain Corbin. <laughs> Unleash your inner geek, because this Cottage Country collection is every computer nerd's dream. I really am truly a geek, so I have just about everything that represents geekdom. I have a lot of computers, thousands of them, actually. My real passion, though, is video games. 15,000 video games in my collection. Sid has made computer and video games his life. We're talking museum-level collecting here. And that's something you just can't put a dollar value on. Or can you? A lot of what people say when they come through here, uh, other than, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much stuff you have, is how much money have you possibly spent? From a collecting standpoint, if you put the two collections together, you're probably looking at over a million dollars. Let's rewind several hundred thousand dollars and a few decades. Well, when I was a kid, I loved video games, but my passion really started to grow when I was introduced to my first computer. I was 10 years old, and you have to understand that back in those days, a single computer in the home was not very common. So I was excited to get a computer there, and one of the things about computers that everybody loves to do, of course, is play video games. Over the years, the two things have sort of intertwined together, and now I just I couldn't pick one or the other. Looking at all this, you may be inclined to make assumptions about Sid and his social life, or lack thereof. Of course, a lot of people think if you're all geek, you've got video games and computers, that you most certainly cannot have a social life. But the reality is, I do have a girlfriend, and uh, she's not uh, as geeky as I am, but she is very supportive. Adorable. Just imagine bringing a girl home to this. Well, when I first saw the collection, I was very overwhelmed. That's no surprise. I think overall what I would want to tell everybody is that it's uh, not only a passion, but it's become a lifestyle. And I can't uh, stress that enough. Um, you know, sometimes uh, date night will include a trip to the local video game store. So that's just something that we have to get used to. And that's the way we operate things around here. There's no limit to Jen's support. I am very supportive. In fact, uh, we do have two dogs. Uh, we have Coleco and Odyssey, which of course have been uh, named after video game related items. And uh, if we are fortunate enough to have children, we will have Atari for a boy or an Apple for a girl. So um, we are excited about everything, you know. You heard that right. The majority of my collection is the console video games, representing around 10,000 different individual games. I love playing them as well as collecting them, but a big chunk of that is learning about them, talking about them, researching them, and of course, tracking them down and buying them. Hmm, sounds like a lot of time spent on the couch and not out on the dock. Some of the games bring the cottage indoors. You can play fishing games, you can do hunting games, you can even go surfing. Whatever it is that you love to do when you're at the cottage, you can definitely do them with video games. It's safe to say that with all these games, Sid will never be bored. And sharing it with friends provides a whole other layer. I'm just jealous of, of how extensive the collection is because there's, there's so many games I, I couldn't even approach the type of collection that Sid has. By the time I reached 16, I realized that I actually had 16 computers, and that's really sort of how the collection got started. Due to sheer size, his collection has a noble new home and is open to the public. Welcome to the Personal Computer Museum. Here we have the history of computers starting from 1976. 
So here we have the Osborne. This was actually the first commercially available portable computer released in 1981. Now to give you an idea how portable this thing was, I'll show you the brochure. There's this guy happily carrying this machine around, but I can tell you from experience, it's not that easy to carry it. It's very, very heavy. Even though this computer is from 1981, it's still in great working order. Let's boot it up and see what it looks like. There it is, it's finally turning on. Sometimes kids think it's broken because it takes so long to start up. Sid is amazingly good at making this geeky stuff interesting. Twice a year, he hosts a game night. Hundreds of gamers get in line for the chance to play his vintage video games. Like a fine wine, Sid's stash is no fun if it isn't shared. Wise words for any collector. I don't think I'll ever stop collecting, no matter what. I mean, whether it's gonna be computers, it's gonna be video games, it's gonna be something, I have that collecting bug, and uh, it's very satisfying for me personally, but it's also great to uh, share the collections with everybody, because if you're just collecting without purpose, what does it really matter? But when I can bring, you know, joy and smiles and excitement to people's lives, that is why I do this.